Best of five series between the Yankees and Kansas City was tied two games apiece. The game was tied at six, and the Yankees' Chris Chambliss was leading off in the bottom of the ninth inning. And there's a long drive to right field. This may be the end of the pennant, but see, it is up and gone. The Yankees win the pennant as Chris Chambliss hits a home run, and the Yankees win the pennant seven to six. Chambliss is being tackled. He has got to be allowed to touch the bases and get to home plate. Home plate is unguarded. He has not even touched home plate, and he goes into the safety of the dugout. Chambliss has won the pennant for the New York Yankees on the first pitch in the bottom of the ninth inning. Two years later, the Yankees needed an extra game just to reach the championship series. They had finished the regular season tied with the Red Sox and went to Boston for a one-game playoff. That's when Bucky Dent made history. The count's one and one. Two outs and two on. The Red Sox lead at 2-0 in the seventh inning here at Fenway. Deep to left. Yastrzemski will not get it. It's a home run. A three-run home run for Bucky Dent. The Yankees now lead it by a score of 3-2. The last guy on the ball club you'd expect to hit a home run. Just hit one into the screen. Bucky did. The Yankees went on to win the game, the LCS, and the World Series. In 1981, the Dodgers and the Montreal Expos were tied two games apiece in their best of five championship series. The game was tied at one in the top of the ninth, and Rick Mundy was up with two outs. Here's the 3-1 pitch, and it's swung on, fly ball, center field, Dawson at the wall. That ball is out of here, and a home run for Rick Monday, and the Dodger bench clears to congratulate Rick Monday, who has hit a two-out home run here in the ninth inning. And the Dodgers have gone ahead 2-1. to one. That proved to be the game winner, and the Dodgers went on to exact some revenge against the Yankees in the World Series. Three years later, the San Diego Padres trailed their championship series two games to one to the Cubs. Game four, tied 5-5 in the ninth. The situation was fertile for a hero. Pitch on the way to Garvey. Hit high to right center field. Way back. Going, going. It is gone. Steve Garvey in the ninth inning. Hit one over the 370 mark. And the Padres beat the Cubs 7-5. Well, the emotion carried over as the Padres won game five as well. And for the first time ever, went on to the World Series. In 1985, the league championship series became a best of seven. And so game five was pivotal, but not deadly. Series tied to two. Game tied to two. Bottom of the ninth, and Ozzie Smith at the plate. Smith corks one into right down the line. It may go. Go crazy, folks. Go crazy. It's a home run. And the Cardinals have won the game by the score of three to two. And a home run by the Wizard. Go crazy. With the Cardinals now up three games to two, the series shifted back to Los Angeles where in game six, the Dodgers led five to four with two out in the ninth. But Jack Clark had two men on. From the stretch, first pitch hit deep to left field. Way back, Guerrero will look up. Jack Clark has just put the Cardinals ahead. A towering three-run home run in the ninth inning. The Cardinals have spilled out of the dugout. The Dodgers are quickly running out of tomorrow's. There were no tomorrows for the Dodgers as they lost both the game and the pennant. It was Boston for whom things looked bleak a year later. The Red Sox trailed the Angels three games to one and were behind 5-4 in the ninth. Donnie Moore needed one strike. Dave Henderson, one swing. Red 
Sox have taken the lead. The crowd is stunned. The Red Sox players are coming out of the dugout to greet Henderson, who has hit a home run. And Boston has come up with four runs and have taken a 6-5 to five lead in the ninth. Well, the Red Sox won that game in the 11th. Then won the next two to miraculously win the pennant and meet the Mets in the World Series. And speaking of the Mets, they had some playoff excitement in 86 as well. Game three against Houston. Down 5-4 in the ninth, one on, one out. Lenny Dykstra, the man they call Neal for the Mets ball club is waiting. Now the pitch, and a high fly ball hit the right field. It is fairly deep, it's way back by the wall. He did it, it's a home run! The Mets win the ball game. Dykstra hits a home run. Then Dykstra hit a home run. This ball game is over. The Mets, of course, went on to win the pennant and then tear the heart from Boston in the World Series. Winters ago, we had a very severe winter out. This one hit deep to left field, way back, and an upper decker. My goodness, this one is headed for the roof. I mean, if they pulled up a battleship out here and shelled this ballpark, they couldn't have put it up there any better than that. Goodbye, baseball! Way out of here to left center field, way beyond the bullpen. Nothing kindles more excitement in baseball than the power hitter, the big bruisers who can hit the ball to the far reaches of your imagination. One of the strongest men ever to play the game was Mickey Mantle. He tested the limits of a ballpark, and some were simply unable to contain him. But perhaps his longest home run came appropriately at home, Yankee Stadium. A shot that was still rising when it hit the facade in right field. A Mark Mantle would reach five times in his career. Daryl Strawberry can hit the long ball, but none longer than one at Olympic Stadium. It's a long drive! That ball is not! Run, Daryl Strawberry. That ball may have hit the lights up there. I think it did. I can't believe it. That ball hit the top of the stadium. With Daryl, even seeing isn't believing. Jimmy Wynn was known as the toy cannon when he played for Houston. He was only five foot nine, but had an explosive bat. And one day at Crossley Field, he fired a salvo on the freeway. Jimmy Wynn, the batter with a count of one ball and two strikes. Wynn swings and drives deep into left field. Look at this one go, everybody. Up to the scoreboard. It's over the scoreboard, bouncing up onto the freeway. I can see it up there where those automobiles are going. Look at that drive. You talk about a tape measure shot. That has got to be the longest home run I have ever seen hit in Crosley Field or hit out of it. No question about it. Look at Jimmy Wynn. In the 1971 All-Star Game, five future Hall of Famers hit home runs. And so did one who just might make it six. One ball, two strikes to Reggie Jackson. There's a long drive. That one is going way up. It is off the roof. That hit the transformer up there. I've never seen anyone get out as quickly as that one did. And it looked like it was on the rise. It wasn't a high fly ball. It was going up. What a smash. Now, hitting a home run into the upper deck in Detroit is not uncommon. But to go beyond that, well, it helps to be as strong as Cecil Field.
Cecil also took on Milwaukee's County Stadium and won. Oh, look at Gone. this. Forget it. That might be out of the whole stadium. It may be. It is. It went out everywhere, right on over the top. Cecil Fielder with the monstrous home run. What a blast. And Jose Canseco christened the Netherland of Toronto Sky Dome. Seiko bids for the second homer of the inning. Watch if it's fair, he's got it. Whoa. And it settles into the upper deck. Oh, my goodness. There's the guy who caught the Canseco home run ball. When you buy a seat in this section of the stadium, you don't exactly come to the park expecting to come away with a souvenir. series everything is magnified and nothing more so than a home run folks always remember a good world series blast of course one they might have forgotten came in the 1942 classic between the yankees and the cardinals whitey karowski hit it off red roughing in the ninth to break a 2-2 tie and give the cards the series in just five games more recently, you've got Minnesota's Kirby Puckett in the 11th inning of Game 6 against Atlanta. Puckett swings and hits a blast! Deep left center, way back, way back! The Twins go to the seventh game! Touch them all, Kirby Puckett! Touch them all, Kirby Puckett! And the Twins have won this game, 4-3! to three. The Twins also won Game 7, in one of baseball's greatest World Series. And if just one World Series home run can be so memorable, what about three in one game? Once again, here's Reggie. Jackson with four runs battled in. Sends a fly ball to center field and deep. That's going to be way back and that's going to be gone. Reggie Jackson has hit his third home run of the game. Reggie Jackson becomes the second man in World Series history to hit three home runs in a game. Babe Ruth did it on two occasions, in 1926 and in 1928. It was Reggie's finest hour as the Yankees won the series, and Reggie was named most valuable player. On to Forbes Field in Pittsburgh for the single most dramatic World Series home run. Seventh game against the Yankees when Bill Mazeroski led off in the ninth. Oh, here's a swing and a high fly ball going deep to left. This may do it. Back to the wall goes Barry. It is over the fence. Home run. The final twist. Then there's Carlton Fisk, whose Red Sox trailed Cincinnati three games to two. 12th inning, game six, score, 6-6. Six, six. There it goes, a long drive. If it stays fair, home run. Even though Boston lost game seven, they can always lay claim to winning what may have been baseball's greatest World Series game. Finally, Kirk Gibson, barely able to walk, called on to pinch hit with one on, two out, and the Dodgers trailing Oakland by one run in the ninth inning. All year long, they look to him to light the fire, and all year long, he answered the demands until he was physically unable to start tonight with two bad legs. And with two out, you talk about a roll of the dice, this is it. Four, three A's, two out, ninth inning, not a bad opening act. High fly ball into right field, she is gone! <laughs> 
man alive. It was the kind of moment home runs were meant to be. And talking about the greatest home runs, you never know when they'll strike. But you can bet your life there will always be more. This is Mel Allen saying, thanks a lot for watching, everybody.